as we get more into working with both lists and strings, here are a couple more operations that will help you kind of go back and forth between um, the two. So some of the operations that we cover today are going to kind of involve different combinations of working with strings and working with lists and sometimes working with both. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to cover is the find action, which um, is for strings. So this is something that'll search a string for the first match of a substring and return the index of where the first match starts. So kind of similar to index, which returns you the first position at which it found a specific item. Um, find for a string, um, so kind of like the index in the index action that we had in lists, find in a string will return you the index of where whatever match you have starts. So similar syntax, you have um, the name of the string, dot find, and then in the parentheses, what you're searching for. So for example, if you are, if you have a string, um, let's get rid of file, um, then list string operations.py. Let's say you had a string called food equals fish taco. And you're trying to find where does the word taco start? Um, then you would have some variable, in which case we're gonna call index variable equals um, food, which is your string, dot find. And then you're gonna type in whatever you're looking for. So um, let's say before we go into taco, let's just start with the letter T. We wanna find where the letter T happened. And so print, we're gonna print whatever we got back, which is the index of where we found the letter T. So index of T, comma, index bar out then we get the index of t is five so fish taco is what we got and then the indexes that we do have are zero one two three four five six seven eight so as we can see t is at position five and so because that's where it found the letter t that's what we're going to get over here so what happens if we want to find taco so index taco bar. So we're going to create a new variable. Say, hey, we want to find where um, if the string has the word taco in it, where did that start? So we're going to do name of the string dot find, and then taco. That's not what we wanted to do. And we're going to print index of taco is index taco bar. that and you'll see it's also five because it's only the index of where whatever string that you put in here started so because it starts at the letter t which is at position five it's going to return you five um, so that's kind of it for find um, order does matter so if you do something like this you accidentally mistype taco um, let me change that but there to reflect that if you mistype it and whatever string that you put in here is not found in your string over here, so it does have the word taco, it does not have the word talk. Um, so if it can't find whatever string you're looking for within the original string, then it will return you a value of negative one, which means, um, as you know, indexes start at zero and then kind of only go up in the positives. Negative one is not a valid index position. So if it returns you negative one, it means it cannot find which index it's related to. So it does not exist in your string. And so that's how you can tell if a certain substring of letters um, or certain these letters in a specific order, whether or not it exists in the string, because if it does not exist in the string, you get a negative one instead of a positive number. So that's it for find. Um, now we're gonna move on to the actions or methods that involve both lists and strings and manipulating both. And so list is an action that will convert a string into a list. 
because remember strings are sequences of characters um, or single letters and lists are sequences as well. So you can convert a string to a list of all the characters in that string. Strings are immutable, so you can't change the value of just a part of the string without changing the whole string, but lists are mutable, so you can change just a single element in the list um, without changing everything in the list. So if you ever have a situation where you need to mutate or change just a single part of your sequence, using this list action is super helpful. So let's say we took our fish taco and we wanted to turn that into a list. How we would do that is by saying food list, let's create a new variable, which is going to be the list version of our food string. Then you do list, open parentheses, and then the string that you want to turn into a list, food. And so if we print that out, print food list, so we print out food list, there, you'll see that instead of string and list versions to compare, we just call it food. So the string version is fish taco, but once you did list of food, which is basically take whatever's in food and turn it to a list of characters, you get this food list over here, which is you get a list with the elements F-I-S-H space T-A-C-O. So that's what list does. It basically says, okay, string, I know you're a bunch of letters in a specific order. Now I'm going to turn into a list of those individual characters um, in that same order. So single letter, single space, whatever character that you put in there, special characters, whatever. Um, each single character is its own element in the list after you use the list action. Next, we're going to move on to join. Um, and so this is kind of how we reverse what we did previously, which is we turn a list into a, a list of strings into a single string of all the elements. So how you do this is going to be a little bit different from what we did previously. You're not going to say like list.join. Um, you're going to say delimiter or what you're going to put a character that is going to be a delimiter. And then you do a dot, then you join. And then in the parentheses, that's where you put the list. So what the heck is a delimiter? A delimiter is any string of characters that's kind of being used to, sell, to separate one element from the next. So the, the delimiter is basically, okay, I'm going to put all these different strings. I'm going to basically shove them together into this one giant string. The delimiter is going to be what I'm going to shove in between each of those individual strings. So the delimiter itself is a string. It's just basically, here's what sell separates one element from the next within my giant string that I'm putting together. So common delimiters are spaces or commas. Um, if you ever have a bunch of elements in a list and you want to turn it into a whole string with all those things separated by commas, that's a really common one, but you can really put anything. And so kind of to illustrate, um, let's put our food list back together. So new food, I'm going to call it new food string equals, so food list is a list of all those letters and we want to put them back together. So you're going to do, um, you're going to put your delimiter, in this case, I'm going to create an empty string, which means I don't want anything to separate um, everything in the food list. Um, I don't want a separation between the F and the I and the S and the H, I just want to shove all of them together. That's what this empty string will do. Then you're going to do dot, then you're going to do, say, join, and then parentheses, and then you're going to put the name of the list, which in this case is food list. And then once you print out new food string, new food string, how did I mess that up? Haha, I said sting instead of string. Be careful what you name your variables, folks. And so we get basically the same thing back together after we said, hey, take whatever characters that we have in our list or whatever strings we have in our list um, and put them back together in a string without anything separating them. If we chose to put other characters in between, so let's say we put this like vertical line here, we run that again. What you get instead of the original fish taco is each of those individual elements, but put back together, but 
between each element, there's this vertical line that goes up and down. Um, or if you wanted to put a comma, that's another common one. Comma and a space. Then you get fish, taco. So you can really put anything in the middle. Um, it's just kind of being like, this is a character that I'm shoving in between all the strings that I'm putting together from the list I had previously had. So this also works on lists that have um, that have not just single characters as elements, but actual like full words. So if we went back to my poorly named file um, and we got our drinks list, you can also do the join on those elements as well. So drinks, drinks, and then new drinks string equals. Let's see that same vertical line dot join drinks list. I did not do that for drinks list. I'm going to call it drinks list um, and print to change that. New drink string um, comma new drink. I did not do that properly. New drink string. I'm inconsistent, apologies. So we run that. Then from this original list of drinks that we have over here, coffee, boba, tea, we get coffee, single vertical line, boba, single vertical line, and tea. So it doesn't matter whether your strings are one character or many characters, you can use join to put them all together into a single string. So that's kind of join, yada, yada, yada. Then moving on to split. So what happens if you want to, instead of splitting just character by character, you wanted to split items in a list into like not single characters, but words. And you also wanted to split it based on specific special characters in your list. That's where split comes into play. So split is kind of the reverse of, kind of the more direct reverse of join. So um, kind of similar to join, it also works based on delimiter. So it returns a brand new list. So you feed a string into split and it returns you a brand new list um, containing elements that are created based on whatever character you're splitting on. So if we have the string new drink string over here, which is coffee, boba, tea, and we wanted to turn that back into a list um, of coffee, but not individual characters, we wanted to turn back into coffee, boba, tea, we can use split to um, give us that list back. So new drink list equals, so first you say the name of the string that you're splitting, which is new drink string dot split. And then in between the parentheses, you put whatever character you're splitting on or whatever the delimiter is. So in this case, it's that vertical line. Uh, pardon me, and then print new drink list, comma, new drink list, which is saying, I want you to create me new elements from the string, but also based on whatever character um, I choose, not splitting them into single letters. So we do that now. Um, we create a brand new list with coffee, boba, tea. The delimiter disappears because you're only using the delimiter to separate one object from the next or one element from the next. So the delimiter, which in this case is the upper or that vertical line, does not appear anywhere in the list because you're saying, hey, this is this very special character or very special string that separates all the elements from each other. And so if we had something like, we changed the delimiter we're using to verticals. Uh, vertical line space vertical line works exactly the same. You're saying, hey, whenever this appears, that's what separates one element from the other. So coffee, go up until you find one of these thingamabobbers. Um, once you find this thingamabobber, everything before that is an element. Cool. Now we start the next element. So boba, we keep on going. We find one of these thingamabobbers again. We say, cool. Everything between here and the previous time we saw this thingamabobber, that's a new element, so we get boba. Then you keep on going until you get to the very end. Um, there's no delimiter at the end, so it's just like, all right, I'm just gonna keep going until the very end. 
And so that's how we get T. So like the join, um, split can be using any string as the delimiter. So whether it's a single character, zero characters, multiple characters, doesn't matter. You're specifying this is the special sequence of characters that's going to split one element from the next. And moving right along. Um, we also, the last one that we're going to kind of cover is strip, which can be used to remove any white space from the front or back of a string. So even though split and strip start with the same letter and have the same number of letters in the words, very different purposes. So strip removes the white space from the beginning or end of a string. So regardless of if it is a, that came out weird, that should be kind of more blunt here. So whether it's a space, whether it's a new line, strip removes like all those things and then prints. So let's demonstrate the code right now. So our main, Dropping that in here. And even though we have spaces in the front and we have new lines and stuff in the back, um, once you do strip, that gets rid of all of it. So the only thing that you have in the string that you print out is, hello, my name is Carla. None of this white space in the front, none of the stuff in the back. So strip is really useful, especially when you're taking in user input. Sometimes people will add extra spaces in the front on accent or extra spaces in the back. Um, by accident, and so strip will allow you to remove all of that. Um, so it can help you clean your input. So that's kind of what strip, strip does. And then just kind of a recap um, of the stuff that we covered today, um, just kind of a note. These are of all the stuff that we covered today, since some of them involve lists, some of them involve strings, some of them involve both. Um, the ones that involve strings are join, split, and strip. Join puts all the elements in a list together into a single string. Split splits a string into a list, and then strip um, cleans up any white space or new lines or any of those kinds of characters from the front and back of a string. And so that's kind of it on this part of things you can do with lists and strings.